in this video, I think I'm going to start this off um, as like a series. Like, let's talk about this type of medication. And the first type of medication I would like to talk about is cephalosporons. And so let's just jump right into it. Why not? So let's talk about cephalosporons. These meds are antibiotics that are a class of drugs used to treat bacterial infections by disrupting the formation of a bacterium's cell wall, leading to cell death. They are categorized into five generations, with each successive generation offering broader coverage against different types of bacteria, including gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. I remember, like, learning in school, um, like, I was always, like, kind of confused about the difference between gram negative and gram positive. The thing is that I have learned is that gram negative is actually just the harder bacteria to kill because it has an outer membrane that is just more resistant to the antibiotic than what gram positive have. And um, to go a little bit more into depth, gram positive and gram negative bacteria are classified based on their cells walls reaction to a gram stain. Gram positive bacteria stain purple while gram negative bacteria stain pink or red. The key difference lies in their cell wall structure. Gram-positive bacteria have a single thick layer of peptoglycan, while gram-negative bacteria have a thinner peptoglycan layer and an additional outer membrane. This structural difference makes gram-negative bacteria more resistant to some antibiotics. So, so there you go. The gram-negative has that additional outer membrane, which makes it harder to kill that bacteria, making it more resistant to antibiotics. This outer layer combined with other defense mechanisms make them harder to treat and more likely to cause severe infections that are difficult to manage. Probably talking about C. diff there. Um, additionally, gram-negative bacteria release endotoxins when their cell wall is damaged and um, can worsen symptoms and lead to a more severe inflammatory response. I got this source from Steward 2023. So that's how the gram negative and gram positive cell walls work. And that is kind of like what I see in nursing, like any culture, especially blood cultures. I always see like the type of gram rot it is, either positive or negative, before I actually see the type of bacteria. And um, it's just kind of interesting. Like I really had a hard time like kind of understanding that in school, but the more I like work, I kind of am understanding more of these concepts and how these, and just how everything, like how all the process is, because I am working, I am seeing it, I am there all the time. And it's, it's like I'm able, instead of like one day a week with clinicals, I am able to see like the whole process of the bacteria emerging and existing. And then us giving it, give it like treating that bacteria with antibiotics. And then the cultures are starting to come back negative, which is great. And then the patient goes home. And it's just like a whole thing. And that's really cool to see. So let's go ahead and jump back into the five generations of cephalosporons. Cephalosporons are grouped by their antimicrobial spectrum, with each subsequent generation offering increased activity against gram-negative bacteria and decreased activity against gram-positive bacteria. So the first generation treats more of the easier antibiotics, and as you go on to the fifth generation, it treats the more resistant gram-negative bacteria. The first generation of cephalosporins consists of cephazolin and cephalexin, I actually use cefazolin. <clears throat> I've given that antibiotic before. Um, a generation, or generation, a brand name used is uh, IV Ancef, and that is the more common medication I give of that form. So these antibiotics, so <laughs> these type of antibiotics are used against gram-positive bacteria that fight against skin and soft tissue infections, UTIs, they're used for surgical prophylaxis, strep throat and ear infections and um, kind of more so your basic infections is what it's um, treating there. Second generations of cephalosporons includes cefiroxim and cefoclor. I've actually never used those two that I know of. These fight against gram negative coverage while maintaining gram positive activity used against infections such as community acquired pneumonia, sepsis, and sinusitis. Third generation includes ceftrioxine, ceft tazodime and cefotuxine. 
however you say that. Um, these antibiotics are gram negative coverage, but with less gram negative activity than the first generation drugs. And they are commonly used against infections like meningitis, pneumonia, and other severe infections like gonorrhea or Lyme's disease. So you get to see that with each generation, the infections get more severe. That's what each antibiotic is treating basically, the more severe in infections as the generations go up. Ceftrioxine, brand name I use a lot is IV Rocephin. I use that so much, especially for UTIs. And I've used that third one too, Ceftizidine. I've used that one too. I forget what the brand name is for that one. For the fourth generation, we have Cefepime. In other words, Maxepime. I also commonly give that antibiotic a lot in the hospital. This is used to fight against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria that have enhanced activity against resistant gram-negative organisms. They're commonly used against uh, hospital-acquired infections, especially pneumonia or abdominal infections. The last two includes a couple that I don't really use in the hospital. I don't feel like trying to say their names, but I will include them right here. This, uh, these antibiotics are used uniquely for activity against both MRSA and some gram-negative bacteria. So the really resistant MRSA, these two antibiotics are using to treat it. It's used against infections caused by MRSA and other resistant bacteria that are not covered by the other cephalosporons. <sighs> and guess what? Those two antibiotics, fun fact, are only available in the US, apparently from the source I got it from. So in summary, the first generation drugs primarily target gram positive bacteria. While second generation drugs have expanded gram negative coverage, the third generation drugs have broad gram negative activity. Fourth generation drugs are effective against resistant gram negative bacteria and the fifth generation drugs are notable for their activity against MRSA, methylene resistant Staphylococcus aureus. I got this information from Bayou et al. 2024. So the mechanism of actions of cephalosporons, they are initially derived from the fungus cephalosporum, SP. They are a large group of bacterial cytal antimicrobials that work uh, via their B lactam rings. The B lactam rings bind to the penicillin binding protein and inhibits its normal activity. If bacteria are unable to synthesize a cell wall, they die. The inability to synthesize a cell wall eventually leads to a bacterial cell death. Bu et al. 2024. So side effects for cephalosporons include stomach upset like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, yeast infections, oral thrush, dizziness, C. difficile. Ugh, no one wants that. So the side effects aren't too bad, so that's why they are really commonly given as well because the side effects just aren't that bad. Might mess up some of your normal gut flora a little bit, and that's why it's like causing those symptoms. But other than that, really not um, too serious of a drug, of a medication, side effect wise, unless you're um, allergic. And I have a fun fact for that. Because cephalosporins are structurally similar to penicillins, some people who have an allergic reaction to penicillins may have an allergic reaction to cephalosporins. And um, I always thought that was like an interesting tidbit. It's because they both derive from the B lactam rings or whatever, like B lactam. I think I wanna plan on doing a video next on penicillins and kind of like start off the series with antibiotics and then maybe lead to heart medications, this and that, perhaps. If you listened, thanks for listening in and I love the support. <laughs>